Hello, fitness business nerds. What's up? Welcome to another episode of the Business for Unicorns podcast. And today it's just me and and my boy Pete. What's up, my friend? Thank you for having me, Michael. Uh, what a pleasure. And today we're going to actually answer a question that came from a listener about performance gym. So it's just me going to be asking Pete some questions and I'll probably weigh in because I always have a fucking opinion about everything. But really, this is to pick your your brain, Pete. And this question came from David Rip Rivkin. So thank you, David, for the question. He asked, um, can you talk a little bit about networking with local high schools and colleges for performance gyms? And so just I'll elaborate on what I think he's asking here, which is, you know, what are some ways to to do some quality networking with contacts at local high schools or colleges um, that run, you know, for, I'm assuming people who run the sports programs or the athletics programs there, how do you build great, meaningful connections with them to be able to benefit your gym? And so where would you start with this one, Pete? I think this one starts with delivering a good product and then pointing back at it. And mm. so people might make the mistake of thinking that this type of networking involves cold outreach and it should never involve cold outreach unless yeah. you're completely new to town. So if you moved into town and you were tasked with starting a gym, going from zero to nothing, sure. I, I mean, all bets are off, go wild. Talk to anyone and everyone who will look you in the eye. But if you're running a gym already and you've got two, three, four, five athletes in the space and you say, this is awesome, I wish I had more, that doesn't mean make a list of the schools in your area and then hunt down the coach's names. It means walk up to the kid who you're doing a great job with and saying, where do you play? Oh yeah, you play at Lincoln Sudbury Regional High School? What's your coach's name? Oh yeah, do you like him? Yeah, we got a good rapport. I'm a captain. You say, oh my God, well, why don't we invite him in watch what you're doing in the weight room. Could you make an email introduction? I'd love to tell him about what we're doing with you. You're up 10 pounds this off season and you feel great and you think you're going to be throwing harder this spring. Uh, why don't I reach out to him and tell him how hard you're working? And people are excited to be facilitators of relationships of this nature. And that's how we get our foot in the door across the board with youth programs, with high school programs, with club programs. Every single time it is Where'd you come from? Where do you play? Do you like your coach? If the answer is yes, well, if, if you like him, I like you. I trust your judgment. Can you make an <laughs> intro? I would love to see how I can help them out. And they all want to do that. And this, this couldn't possibly be more of a universal strategy, regardless of the client demo you try and take care of. This is how we got our staff in the room to observe Tommy John procedures. It's, it's how Eric found his way into orthopedic surgeons, you know, literally next to them as they are carving up people's elbows. It was by having people come in and say, my PT prescription ran out and insurance says I'm done. So uh, I was told that maybe you guys might be able to help next. And the logical next question is, all right, cool. Who did your procedure? How far post-op are we? Were you comfortable with the outcomes? How was their bedside manner? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you have thoughts on other providers that you chose not to work with? And we're just constantly accumulating a informed list of service providers or coaches or professionals in our area who we are one point of contact removed from at every time. And if we do right by them in the weight room, it is the most insignificant ask ever to ask to request an email introduction. And those are people who are actively engaging with those service providers or those coaches. And the people on the other end of the email can't choose to ignore that email unless they want to look like a complete asshole with somebody that they have to engage with routinely. And so you are all but guaranteed a response. And if you're charismatic and you are a giver and not a taker and, and you come to the table in those conversations and a complimentary and positive fashion and, and look for ways to deliver value, you're going to get responses. And those opportunities are going to continue to manifest themselves in different ways. But it all starts with the people who are already in your gym and you rant. Yeah, no, it was a great rant. It was a great, you, know, you got a solid four minute rant there. That's well done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it just goes to show that, you know, that your experience in this is decisive, right? That like no networking should be cold networking unless that's your only freaking choice, right? If you think about networking, like you being part of a giant spider web, you only need one, you need to pull one thread to find the next connection. 
right? And every person you know or have ever met is a thread. <laughs> and if you are doing great work for them and you've built know and like and trust and they've paid you and you're giving them a great experience, they're going to very happily be your next connection to the next thread. And then that person you're going to provide, provide some value for, build some connection with, and they will be your connection to the next thread, right? So I think that that idea really resonates with me, Pete, because I feel like I'm saying that all the time to many of our Unicorn Society members is that if you want to network in your community, regardless of the purpose, right, whether it's with high schools and colleges or it's other local businesses um, or other gyms, or if it's to find staff, right, whatever networking you're going to do, it should always be through the people who already know, like, and trust you. They will help you make connections much more successfully than going out and doing cold outreach. And when you have to do cold outreach, just know it's a longer timeline. It's a, it's a longer timeline to invest in someone who you have no connection to. It's not wrong. And I think sometimes you have to do that. But really, if you can avoid it, use the people you already are connected to, your customers, your staff, anyone who's in your community is likely likes you enough. <laughs> They're happy to introduce you to someone else, especially if you do it in the way that Pete demonstrated, which is helping them understand the value of the connection. Right. I think it was you did, which was what you did so beautifully. So can you just say a little bit, you know, once you do make that contact, I'll go back to David's initial question. Once you do make that contact with a local high school or college level, I'm guessing coach or administrator of some kind, what is your first move? What is the first thing you're doing once you do make that connection? I like to kill them with kindness. So that might be as simple as saying, Hey, I've, I've just heard wonderful things about. Uh, the way you lead the team, the way you speak to the underclassmen, the way that you manage your captains. Oh, I've heard you're particularly effective at managing difficult parents, and I admire that. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be comfortable with me coming out and observing one of your practices? Or is there any way I could potentially send a staff member out to help you out with tryouts or with practice? Or would you be interested in coming in and getting a lift in with our team? Or do you want to grab a coffee somewhere in between the two of us? And I can talk to you about what we've been doing with your guys. And they're either a compliment of their skill set or mm -hmm. an ask for ways to deliver value to them. There's never, ever a circumstance where I say, hey, um, Michael told me he plays on your team. I want more guys like Michael. Can you send me more guys? Mm -hmm. that's, that's just that's not, not what it. this approach is. This yeah. is, hey, Michael told me he plays on your team. He has nothing but good things to say about the environment that you facilitate. And I'd really admittedly like to learn more because I admire people who build a following like that. Is there any way I could see you in action? Who in their right mind would hear that and be like, no, you need to like screw, get out of here. I don't have yeah. feedback. For you. No, people like to be, they like to feel like they're facilitators of these networks. They like to be complimented on their craft. And mm -hmm. the thing about these coaches and these, these professionals that we're talking about, the people that you want to be connected with, they're doing it because it's a, it's a passion project. It's a labor of love. It's something that they're, they're typically pouring their, their free time or valuable personal time into. It's after hours work. It's stuff mm -hmm. that cuts into their work day. It's stuff that takes away time from their family. So you're damn right. It makes them feel good to hear. I've been told you're good at this. Yeah. And so I just look for ways to make people feel that little dopamine rush of being told you're good at that thing that you're passionate about. And then I ask for ways that I can help them be better at it or facilitate getting more people in front of them to see it in action. Yep. And yeah. I just, I try and, I try and be a giver and not a taker. That's really yeah. it. Yeah, well said. I think it goes all, it goes a long way just to start a relationship with praise, to start a relationship with like some people told me awesome shit about you. Like that feels good to hear and it's true and it gets you closer to them faster. It's really a win-win, right? So I think it's a great strategy, Pete. And I'll just I'll share an example uh for from a, like a non-sports performance context for those of you who are not in that space, but this is true if you want to do other local business partnerships or if you want to partner with the cafe down the street, the chiropractor down the street, the hair salon down the street. The same same thing applies. One of your clients is probably a customer there, or they know someone that works there, or they themselves work at a local business, or their, their spouse or partner goes to that chiropractor, that hair salon. <laughs> you can find someone that is probably a string between you and that local business and use that as a warm intro. And then in your warm intro, 
just like Pete mentioned, you say something, hey, coffee shop down the street, all my clients tell me they love coming to your coffee shop after they're done training with us because they get that uh, some of your fantastic salads or one of your smoothies, or they love getting that coffee right before they walk into our training session in the morning. I'd love to introduce our client, more of our clients to your people. Do you have any cards we can put at our front desk? Do you have any any information about um, you know where you source your coffee? I'll put it in our next newsletter, right? You offer some praise and some way to build value for them. You're absolutely going to get a response if your first if your if your first outreach is let me help you with your business. I've already been told you're awesome, right? So I think whether it's sports performance or the hair salon down the street, if you want to build partnerships and expand your network for the business, I think this is a strategy that's pretty universal. Yeah. Anything you yeah, add to that? One last thought on this that comes to me now, as you say that it's, we sit on either end of the table of this from at different yes. times in life. Sometimes yep. we're the one who's receiving that feedback and, and we realize that we want to reciprocate and we can understand how it works. But what I would encourage people to do is excitedly kick opportunities to other people mm -hmm. that you probably aren't great at facilitating. So that's like the parent who comes to me and says, I heard you guys work with mostly like 13 and up my kids, 11 he's, but he's really driven and he likes this. And I, I think he could do it. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, could we fake it and give them an experience where the kids enamored mm -hmm. and the in the room with some professional athletes? Sure. But what if I said to that parent, Hey, um, Jeremy Frisch runs a gym two towns over and that is his client avatar and they're exceptional at it. Can I give you a hyperlink to his website and suggest that you reach out to him and see how he can help your son? And in a couple of years, if he's still interested in this and you'd like to come to us, then shoot me an email. I have been doing that for years and I have multiple clients on our active client roster right now who came back to us the minute they turned 13. And mm -hmm. the dad in my inbox being like, hey, we did it. Jeremy was awesome. Yep. Thank you. We want to cut our ride in half now. And we got there, we got to 13, we're ready. Can we come? And I realized that, sure, it's a long play, but understanding where you are kind of compromising on the quality of your product to serve a population that falls just outside of that avatar and knowing yeah. that maybe it's a smarter long-term play to put them in the hands of a capable service provider and know that if you did right by them a year, two years, three years ago, it could very well circle back and the lifetime value of that client could be immense. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of the playbook we've been running for a long time. And I had that conversation earlier today with a dad who came back out of nowhere and he said, I doubt you remember me, but I called you when my kid was nine. And uh, I think he's ready based on what you told me back then. Is that hold true still? And the assessment Great. was booked. Amazing. Yeah. I think that this requires like a mindset of abundance. Yep. Right. Just like there's plenty for everyone. I want to provide the best possible experience for everyone I contact in my network. And also, you know, it requires maybe a slight belief in karma, <laughs> right? That I'm going to just do good and provide people with the best possible experience, even if it doesn't mean they're going to pay us. And it's going to come back to me someday. And it's true. A lot of people that, you know, we send folks to at MFF, like in our community in, in New York, they'll want to work with us someday. You know, sure. We might put some their flyers in our space, but then they'll be like, do you have any flyers we can put in our space? Or they might call us and say, hey, we're hosting an event. Do you want to be a sponsor? You know? And so like that, it will come back to you. You know, if you're doing this right, there's, you're going to be on, as you said, as Pete said, uh, both sides of the table pretty frequently. <laughs> and the way you act when you're in both seats matters. Yeah. Um, I think the moment you realize that you have like a sustainable long-term business is when you start to feel the benefits of those actions from years past. Yeah. That's the moment where you're kind of like, oh, we got something with staying power here. I do remember saying that to a couple of years back and mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty cool feeling in my experience. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Well, let's leave it there. Um, thanks again. I was at David Rifkin. Thanks for the question, David. I thought it was a really great one and clearly spurred a lot of conversation, but let's leave it there. We'll make it a short podcast today. So uh, thanks for doing this, Pete. Dear listeners, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review. It really helps spread the word and get people to know us about, know about us. Um, and if you have any other questions you want us to cover, please email us. Uh, Michael at businessfunicorns.com, Pete at businessfunicorns.com. Uh, this was a great chat, Pete. Thanks. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, I like these quick hitters. Let's do more of these. Yeah, for sure. Hi, it's Mark. I hope you loved today's show. Now, 
As you may know, due to overwhelming demand, our coaching group exclusively for brick and mortar training gym owners, the Unicorn Society, is sold out. Alas. However, we do plan to open up a handful of spots later this year, so here's what to do. If you're interested to learn more about the program, see if you qualify, and importantly, get on the list for priority consideration for future spots, head to businessfunicorns.com slash unicorn. One more time, that's businessfunicorns.com slash unicorn. See you next time.